Thanks, Lila, for hanging out with me. Don't mention it. I was thinking of coming up here and watching the city anyway. So this is where Saray's guidance has led us. Indeed. I'm sure he is doing much the same, watching them and thinking about how far we've come. And then Zavi too. After our long journey with the Shepherd, I imagine they're using this time to reflect on their past and, perhaps, their future. <laughs> Kinda like us, huh? Oh well, Edna coming to see me? Should I be scanning the skies for pigs? I want you to tell me, why were you killing Hellions? <laughs> Where'd this come from? And why now? Is it to save them? Did you make up your mind that it's something you have to do in order to save them, like Saray did? Oh, I get it. You still haven't quite wrapped your head around the idea of death as a form of salvation. And so every time you put it into words, it's been to convince yourself. <sighs> Edna is a smart woman. I imagine right now she's busy sorting out her feelings before we face our final battle. No doubt she's consulting Zavid for guidance. He's seen more of the world than any of us, the good and the bad. You're really a good study of people. You should have been a school teacher. <laughs> But Rose, you had something you wanted to ask me, didn't you? When the dragon appeared, Saray found his answer right then and there, didn't he? It was that he didn't want that battlefield to see any further killing or bloodshed. Yes. And then he immediately took the actions he deemed necessary in order to achieve that. Time flows differently for people with a vision, or so it seems to the rest of us sometimes. He's incredible. Wow, look at all those stars. Yeah. I forget who said it, that there are as many emotions as stars in the sky. I can totally see that. A metaphor for how each emotion sparkles in its own way, huh? Must have been a romantic who came up with that one. But you can also sense his insecurities about that, can't you, Rose? Like he's constantly on edge, worrying that if he let his guard down even a little bit, he'd lose his way again. I think Saray himself might be the only one who doesn't see that. I mean, you know how little it takes for a taut string to go snap, right? Are you worried? Mm, not worried, really. Whatever happens, whatever the future brings, I hope I can make it work somehow. No, I know I can. <laughs> so that's your answer. I guess so. But I've always been like this ever since I was a kid. I'm starting to understand why you don't generate any malevolence. So I want everyone not to worry and to just go do what they need to do. Pow! But I don't mean like, see ya, have fun, I'll be over here. I promise I'm with the rest of you guys for the long haul. <laughs> Don't you think it would be better to tell that to everyone, not just me? After all, I'm sure Edna and Zabid would take no small amount of inspiration from it. Huh, I don't know, it'd be weird to walk up to them and be like, I am here, we are friends. Probably true. Sheesh, you women folks sure are complicated. But then, that's part of the appeal. 
<sighs> Are you just stupid? Yep, big old stupid Ed. The type who can't do anything but believe in the one way he's found to get stuff done. What makes you believe in it? I just have a need to protect the pride of my friends and fellow Seraphim. No one becomes a Hellion because they want to. But when you turn into one, you know what that means, right? So that's why I end it for them. For the sake of their pride. <laughs> and you think that saves them? Who knows? That's something they get to ponder after death, in their own personal afterlife. Huh. How gallant of you. So that must be what makes you so... Attractive? <laughs> Ow! Hey! Knock it off! Don't you all have one more thing you need to brace yourselves for? It'll depend on what Saray does with Mautelis after we take down Heldoth. But you know what? That's alright. I'm prepared. No matter what he decides, I'm willing to accept it. Gotta say, I think your resolve wins out over mine. I don't even know if I could do that. Just look on silently while one of our own suffers in agony. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that. We're all in this together till the very end. <laughs> so, if Savid's quivering in fear, you'll be there to give him a gentle hug, right? Gross. <laughs> well, if my saying something is enough to cheer those two up, it might be worth it after all. It's enough to have someone to lend you a kind word. After all, that's what friends and comrades are for. But Rose, if you don't mind, may I ask what prompted you to bring all this up? Hmm. I just... I kind of thought you and I might have sort of been thinking about stuff along the same lines. I just wanted to tell you, you don't have to carry it all by yourself. <sighs> huh? What? Did I say something funny? <sighs> huh? <gasps> the two of us really are more alike than we realize. We commit to things, we decide on what role we're gonna play, without really consulting with anyone else. Oh, now that you mention it... So that's why I felt like we might be sharing the same thoughts. We're the same! Independent women! <laughs> Rose, I must thank you. I feel like a great load has been taken off my mind. Really? Hey, cool beans! <laughs> I'm profoundly grateful to whatever twist of fate brought us together. You really are a drama queen, Lila. Aw, Rose! <laughs> Alright, come on. We got some friends to go cheer up. <laughs> There's something I learned from this journey. Some stars you can't see, and because you can't see them, you think they're not shining. But they are. It turned out that there were a lot of stars that we couldn't see from our home in Elysia. Once people notice the stars, they start to understand just how brilliantly they shine. Just like how Alicia finally got a sense of what Seraphim were truly like the first time she heard your voices. <laughs> that was a trip. <laughs> you should have seen your face. <laughs> I was really excited back then. It gave me hope that one day other humans might be able to talk to the Seraphim. But even then, 
You had to cut off your senses and hold your... Oh, I see. You were actually contemplating what you'll do after the last battle. Yeah. If I let myself become a vessel for Mautelis and shut off all my senses, we might be able to spread that power throughout the entire continent of Glenwood. If it works, and that's a big if, the Squire ought to be able to wield power like mine, even if she doesn't possess natural ability on par with a shepherd. So long as you entrusted all of your senses to the Squire, it's not out of the question. And we might be able to grow the ranks of Squires who could help us. Just think of Alicia. It's arguably a more constructive approach than just waiting for another shepherd to appear. Exactly. But you understand the implications, don't you? Yeah. Until the Squires can quell enough of the Earth's malevolence to let Mautelis' natural purification take over, I would need to wait and sleep. By bonding with Maltellus, you'll be abandoned in time. It could take years. It could take centuries. And even if humans appear who can see and talk to Seraphim, there's no guarantee they'll choose the path of coexistence. I believe in them. What about your dream? Weren't you going to go off exploring ruins around the world? My dream will live on, so long as I don't forget. Very well. Thank you, Miklio. It's our job. No way. Out of typically stupid. It's not so much that guys are stupid. It's just that the ladies are too smart. What's that? Your philosophy? Huh. Looks like the gang's all here. I suppose you were all listening to us then? Yes. Not the Edna, but you really are totally stupid. stupid. <laughs> Let's head out. Huh? We're not waiting till morning? No farewells to Alicia or anyone? I'd like to set out under these stars tonight. So that every time I gaze up at the night sky, I can remember this very day. Guess we've got our own romantic right here. You think so? So what's up? Are we going? Yeah. To the last battle. Yeah. All right then. No doubts, no regrets. Let's go!